Hey everybody, this is Professor Diffley. This is History 103, uh, Module 3, Chapter 2. Uh, so this is the first in the lecture videos uh, for this module, this chapter. Um, so in this module, what we're starting to look at is, uh, as you can see in the title, the rivers, cities, and first states around the globe. Uh, so we're going to look at four major civilizations here uh, going in order of when they appeared. We're going to start in Mesopotamia, Ancient Egypt, uh, the Indus River Valley uh, uh, civilizations, and uh, civilizations in each East Asia, which are uh, uh, in today's uh, modern uh, China. Um, so uh, one thing, uh, and I, I mentioned some of this in the overview, overview video uh, for the module, on Blackboard is uh, this is a really important chapter. Uh, it sets up everything we're going uh, forward. You know, the, these are the major civilizations we're going to look at. We'll add some more as they pop up, uh, but we're going to build off of everything in here. Um, so uh, you got two weeks to do this. Um, and, you know, the, the exam, the module and all that. Uh, the other thing is um, I gave a fair amount of required videos this week uh, and they're really important. Um, and one of the things is to it, try to cut down on how much, uh, you know, viewing you have to do because there's a good amount of reading. Uh, the lecture slides um, are uh, pretty dense at points um, and because I try to get all the information out there for you. Um, is that what I'm going to do is I'm not going to uh, go over everything in these slides, uh, specifically for Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, and the Indus River Valley. Uh, Valley. Uh, really rely on the textbook, what's in the lecture slides, uh, but those required videos, the crash course videos on those civilizations, those three civilizations, uh, they're going to take the place of uh, most of my uh, lecture on this um, because they really do do an excellent job. And I don't want to repeat uh, everything that's in those videos uh, for me and for you. Right. Uh, there was a good amount of uh, lecture videos for the first module, uh, module two, uh, the first chapter. So uh, this time uh, I'm going to uh, focus on some of the stuff uh, that I couldn't find uh, good videos for. Uh, I still wanted to uh, talk about some of it. So I'm going to go through this and, uh, you know, uh, at, at points I'm going to go through uh, more in detail and other parts I'm going to skip ahead. Um, and uh, you can, again, uh, rely on the videos there. So again, as always, make sure you uh, go through these lecture slides. Uh, make sure to look at the notes. Uh, there's a good amount of notes in some of them. Uh, and as always, read the textbook as uh, you probably uh, found on chapter one. Uh, there is, as I mentioned before, there are uh, exam questions that are based on the textbook, right? So you really need to do, be reading it there. Um, but uh, so let's get into this. Again, this is an overview map uh, showing where uh, uh, all the civilizations are, the major civilizations at this point uh, on the planet. Um, as you can see, uh, and as I was going to say, they all start in rivers, in rivers, uh, and around uh, major river civilizations, uh, or the civilizations uh, over major river systems. Um, and the uh, first uh, required video I have is uh, about water and classical civilization. So make sure to take a uh, watch on that. Again, as always, the required videos. Uh, will also, uh, at least parts of them, yeah, questions from them uh, will appear on the exam. So make sure you're reading them. Um, so some of the uh, overview stuff here as we get into it. Uh, one of the big uh, events here is uh, the development of cities. Um, where we left off in the last chapter is people, uh, humans uh, had just gone through the Neolithic Revolution, began settling down in farm communities. Um, and what you get now after that is a uh, rise, a, a growth of population in these areas. Uh, the climate is uh, still uh, changing and getting warmer. There's more growing city, uh, uh, seasons. Um, and so you're starting to get uh, uh, larger populations. You're going to need uh, more um, uh, sort of uh, stratified, you're going to get stratified systems of people uh, organizing them, uh, you know, taking care of defending the surplus, especially from uh, these farm areas. That's a big thing. Um, and you're going to get the rise of cities. And now when we're talking about cities here, you know, by modern standards, they're not uh, big at all. You know, some of these maybe 35,000 people in them, 20,000 people. Uh, you know, today, again, that's not, a, you know, not, I don't even think that qualifies as a city. You know, uh, Springfield has just over 100,000. Uh, um, I forget, it's under 200,000 uh, people in it. And Springfield's not the biggest city, but still it's, you know, it's five to three, three to five times bigger than anything you found here. But remember, we're going from hunting, you know, in the grand scheme of things, and not that long time, we're going from hunter-gatherers, you know, maybe 25, maybe tops 50, uh, 50 people in the group, uh, usually around 20, 25, uh, to a uh, 
city of uh, with 20,000 or more residents. So you could see that as a major, major change uh, there. Um, so uh, this is, a, you know, really is a turning point and increasingly, uh, you know, uh, humans uh, are going to, uh, from this point on uh, in human history, going to live in cities uh, more and more. And today, you know, if you don't live in a city, you live very close to one. So this is the way uh, things are going on, uh, really, in, for most humans on, on the planet. Again, you're only going to find cities in uh, select areas, really. Uh, again, uh, you know, th three major ones uh, develop here. Uh, and, you know, they say three, but that's because uh, Mesopotamia and Egypt, uh, you know, the Middle East uh, are pretty close together. But, uh, you know, so you're going to have that area, North Africa, Western uh, Asia, uh, in the Mediterranean. Uh, again, Harappan or uh, Indus River Valley, uh, Valley Civilization, what is uh, today's modern Pakistan and uh, Northwest India, and then East Asia, what is uh, China. Um, again, another thing that's going to come is this, as you get a larger and larger populations, like I said, you're going to need uh, less people uh, spending all their time looking for food, get, well, growing food, and it's going to lead to labor specialization, right? You're going to get uh, people who no longer need to be in farming, so they're going to do uh, different types of work. They're going to be uh, potters, they're going to be leather makers, uh, uh, you know, uh, essentially carpenters. Uh, you're going to have warriors, priests, uh, 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 a ruling class, um, and, and all these other things that are going to uh, really allow people to uh, create more and more things. And as a result, uh, there's going to be more trade. Um, and you're going to see this especially in Mesopotamia because you now that area of the world, the uh, Eastern Mediterranean, uh, what is now uh, from Turkey to Iraq, Syria, uh, you know, Israel, all the way down into Egypt, that entire area there, um, it's like a crossroads, right? It's it's your Afro-Eurasia, right? The, the meeting point of three continents. And you're going to have more and more trade uh, through this region. Uh, so <coughs> a really important there. And you can see uh, uh, also uh, you're going to have uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, more, not just, uh, you know, the construction, right? So you're going to get uh, bigger cities. You're going to get something called monumental architecture. Monumental architecture are really uh, buildings made for, for grandeur, right? So you're going to get temples. You're going to get palaces. They show the uh, power and the importance of these uh, uh, you know, buildings and the people who live and or work in there. Um, you can see uh, monumental architecture all around in the modern world. Think of looking at a, a Capitol building, uh, you know, take the White House, the, the Capitol building in uh, Washington, D.C., or any state capital, uh, you know, court buildings. Um, they are made to be, uh, you know, to really make a statement when you see it, right? You see it, it is big. Uh, and so it makes the human mind think that's important, right? Something important is going to uh, go on in there. And that's what we mean by monumental. Um, uh, really getting that idea. This is something really, really important um, there. Uh, again, you're going to get uh, different forms of co uh, community and political organization. You're going to go from the egalitarian uh, communities uh, into stratified communities uh, in, in many places ruled by a uh, monarch, right? A monarch is a, uh, uh, a leader who uh, isn't elected, right? Uh, monarchs usually pass on their title to uh, by blood, right? So if I'm uh, a monarch, then my uh, oldest child, usually a son, uh, will become uh, a monarch after me, right? That, that, how, why? Because they're qualified? No, because they're part of the ruling family. So you're going to get elites, right? You're going to get monarchs. You're going to get nobility. These are the uh, most important, richest, most powerful people underneath the king. Uh, you're going to get priests, um, a priestly class in many places who are going to be uh, really important because they have a connection to the gods. And then you're going to move down into these stratified uh <clears throat> um, stratified uh, society, right, all the way down to slaves in some uh, places. Uh, it's also going to change how people worship. Uh, you're going to go from people worshiping uh, really, um, you know, nature, you know, animism, um, which was a belief that everything had a spirit. You're still going to have that, but, you know, you, people would worship wherever they were, right? Uh, out hunting, uh, if they're hunter-gatherers, they're semi-nomads, uh, as they're moving around. Now you're going to get large temples, right, uh, that are controlled by a priestly class, right? People are going to go there, pray. Um, now it's going to be centralized more and more. You know, for example, you're going to get uh, ziggurats in Mesopotamia, these large step pyramid-like temples that are centers of the cities uh, and increasingly more and more important. And so the religion is going to be um, more formalized, uh, more structured, um, and you're going to have, again, a priestly class uh, 
really uh, controlling that. Uh, and in some places you're also going to get, especially in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, uh, you're going to get uh, the, the priestly class, the religion and the politics uh, blending together, right? The monarch is uh, sort of divinely appointed by uh, a god or many gods. Uh, and uh, so that's uh, really going to tie that. That also supports the king's power, right? When you have the idea of now you're not, if, if we believe that the monarch is there because a god chose them to be there, now, if you uh, go against the monarch, you're not just going against the monarch, you're also going against uh, a deity, right? So it, it adds more power and people are more willing to um, believe in their rule in those things. Um, so uh, just one of these, you know, just give me an idea of these cities. Uh, here is a city of Ur Uruk, Uruk uh, which is in modern day Iraq. And that's where most of these uh, cities are. They, they grew up in a place called uh, Sumeria, Southern Mesopotamia. Um, and which is, again, uh, modern-day Iraq. Uh, you know, this is a big city uh, for the time, the first city uh, that they know of in the uh, Mesopotamia, and that is where the first cities develop, is in Mesopotamia, in Samaria. Um, and so, you know, again, at first it has uh, about 10,000 people. Uh, the image here is an uh, artist depiction of what it probably looked like uh, based on uh, the archaeological record and what we know. Other where uh, again you get more monumental architecture like I talked about uh, temples sacred uh, precincts uh, and so what I mean by a sacred precinct is not just the temple but the area around it is all dedicated to that so that's what we mean by precinct there you're going to get administrative buildings think the palace or a government building things like that um, again specialization that I talked about all uh, um, present in this place. Uh, this was both an administrative center right where the uh, government did the monarch uh, and the government. Uh, controlled. They're going to set rules. Um, that you're also going to have the administration of the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of the religion, all the rites and things that uh, uh, um, you know uh, how they worship. Um, that sort of thing. All there in this city. It's all going to again be increasingly specialized there. Uh, why is this important? New phase in human development and social organization. Like I said, uh, this is uh, moving away from Neolithic revolution. Really does change everything. Um, and here are the signs of it there. Again, economic, religious, political power are tied um, to this place. Uh, and you, you would see that if you go to these cities. You could see in the background up there uh, the, the ziggurat. Um, so that would be sort of at the center of the city. As you see, the river is really the center of the city. But, you know, uh, you're going to have a, uh, over here, you're going to have the temple. Uh, and these would be more the palace, right? And you can see they're going to be two uh, uh, loci of uh, power there. Um, and again, you're going to get those hierarchies. Um, and again, uh, rise to uh, eventually territorial states and even empires. Um, so these are just some more images here. This is a uh, depiction again of uh, uh, the city of Uruk. Um, here's what the ruins of it uh, look like today. Um, you can see again, I mentioned in the uh, pr past videos, uh, it, you know, uh, humans build in straight lines, nature doesn't. Uh, you can see the walls. How do we know these walls and just not a pile of dirt? Well, you can see the bricks, right? You can see the outlines of the bricks there. Um, and that also tells you something. If they have walls, it's to keep people out, right? And they're for defensive purposes. So that also tells you increasingly you're going to get larger and larger scale warfare as people and communities, cities, uh, states uh, fight over resources, fight over trade, uh, that sort of thing. Um, here's just, you know another uh, picture of a temple, uh, excavated temple. Um, and again, this is the world in the third millennium there. So again, that's the overview of where we're at here. Um, a little bit more of these early cities. Again, new technologies. You're going to have uh, wheels for pottery making. Um, so you can turn out more and more pottery uh, to store uh, surplus goods, to store um, uh, you know just food in the home. Uh, you're going to have vehicles. Again, not, not a motor-powered vehicle, but carts and things like that that can be pulled by animals or humans and things like that. Increasingly, you're going to get metallurgy, which is the making of weapons. Um, I mean, making of um, uh, tools out of, um, you know, metal uh, ores. Um, again, it will be making uh, weapons, but you're going to be making uh, jewelry. Uh, there's going to be, uh, you know, making of plows and things like this. Really, where we're at now is the Bronze Age uh, for most of these people. That, that's the uh, uh, metal that they're going to be using is a bronze. And so that's what, what makes it a Bronze Age. Are you going to get more and more stone making, uh, stone working? So think of those ziggurats. Think of the pyramids, you know, these massive uh, uh, construction with, uh, you know, very, very skilled labor, very fine tools, that sort of thing. Um, again, you're also going to get an ur urban rural divide, which there is still to a degree, right? You're going to have an urban life. It's going to be faster. It's going to be mass production, specialization. 
Um, it's going to be busy and crowded. Rural life is going to be more close to nature. Um, really, uh, you know, still working the land, that sort of thing. You're starting to get a divide between the two, um, which continues in some ways today and will continue, you know, to grow uh, through uh, human history, right? Uh, people in this urban dwellers and those out there. Um, and nonetheless, even though there's a divide, they're interdependent, right? Uh, the uh, cities need the people uh, farming. Uh, the farmers need the cities to protect them and also somewhere to sell their uh, their their goods. Um, and they're obviously going to be uh, closely linked, right? Even if they're the farmers outside in these city states, right? City state. Uh, <clears throat> controls the farming and uh, around there, they're still going to be uh, linked, you know, probably still under the same state, family ties, trade, politics, things like that. Uh, and increasingly, you're going to get new intellectual advances. You're going to get writing systems, uh, record keeping, uh, poetry, um, and you're going to get a new group of people who control the ability to write. And that's going to be really important. Um, and we'll go on to that uh, in the next uh, lecture video.